So in Canvas, hopefully, does everyone have their H1? They have decided what it is or know what it is? Anyone? Say yes. Yes. Thank you. I mean, if you have it, <laughs> then just say yes. So let me go back to this wireframe here. I'm pretty sure this was this is someone else's set up with this. If you right click on a character style that was already set up, you can edit an H1. I'm going to go to Open Sans. See how this changed? Because this headline was already connected to a character style, it changed in there. So an advantage of having a wireframe when you have those styles set up is once you know your true styles to what you're creating, you just go in and alter some of these character styles and your design changes fairly quickly. And it ha I have it as bold. Here it is 90. So this is things that you, 90 points that you would be telling your developers. You would also be telling them things like line spacing, which is the letting here, and this is also the tracking. So here you have tracking right now. There's no tracking. I want a little bit more tracking to that, so I'm going to arrow up. And you can see it changing there. So I'm going to put my tracking at 50. I have my point size at 90. And I'm going to click this here to make it all caps. So that means anything that I assign to that style is going to have those attributes. If you did not set up these character styles, it's okay. You can set them up now, or if these were kind of all over the place, you can set them up while you're creating. Some people will never set up character styles. They'll just change everything by hand, which is fine. It's a little bit slower, but XD was made so you can make these wireframes and then switch your designs really quickly into that. Something else that you might have noticed that was on here is color. So sometimes you don't know what color you're going to do and you don't know what point size you're going to actually have until you've put the image in and played around a little bit more. So the style guide is a little, is fluid. You would submit this type of information to a developer at the end of what you designed. We're doing it at the beginning just so that you guys were talking through some of these decisions that you need to make and you know where to apply them. So right now, I just want to know the typeface and if it's gonna, what case it's going to be. I'm not worried too much about color or spacing right now. We can later. So H2, let's see where we would, might have some H2s on our wireframe. So H2 is usually going to be the next biggest headline. So for me, this feels like it's H2, our burger, the chef. Well, let's see. This didn't change. Yeah. So here we have an H1. So we use H1 is only used once on this desktop because there's one very large one. And I know that because these didn't change and these are a little bit smaller. So this is probably your H2 are these headlines here. Your H3 is going to be this. Your H4, I would say, is actually probably going to be your title that's over these images. And your H5 will be this small subhead above here, which also looks similar to one of these. And if it's not, you would just kind of figure out what an, this H1 would be. Or sorry, what this if that needed to be its own thing. So sometimes you have all the way to H6, and H6 may, might just style one or two things on your page. Technically, you want your H1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to go in order of large 
to big. Sorry, from large to small. There are times you're designing and you need like one thing to be styled and your H6 is somewhere in the middle. That's okay. There's no hard, fast rule that says that it has to be biggest to smallest. It's just a generalized practice. So you will have, we decided one, two, three, four, five. What is, which one? What is it called? Title case. No, the first letter is big and the other one. Yeah, H1 is the biggest. No, she asking like upper case and the upper one when the small letters and just first letters upper case. Like our broker, for example. Like it's called. So this would be called title case? Is that what you're asking? Title case, yeah. Sorry, title case. And a good uh, like little cheat sheet for that too is when you're in Illustrator and you do change case style or type case style, it'll tell you the kind. So there's uppercase, lowercase, title case, and sentence case are the, are the four options. So this assignment, this particular style guide assignment is something that I think you're going to go back and forth with while you're designing. I think that'll be a better way than making all these decisions right now. So I think you're going to be in your style guide, designing, adding, adding your fonts. Um, so we'll, I'm going to let, leave you fill in the rest of the H's while you're designing today. I'm going to finish the demo and you'll understand how it goes. The other thing we need to know is a P. P is paragraph. So that's just all of the other text. So that's this text here, this text here, this text here, this text here. All of this text size, that's all these little, will all pretty much be the same size. And you will be able to, you know, you want to keep it that way. When you write code yourself, if you're hand coding a website, you keep that all exactly the same. When we design in something without code, it'll start with your paragraph text, and let's say you wanted to make this a little bit different, you have the capabilities of just then changing one thing on the page, and that's fine. But we do have to start with what our basic paragraph text would be. The other things off your stylescape that I wanna know are your colors. So I will put this up, you'll have H1, H3, H4, H5, a paragraph. So you will have a typeface variation. So variation means bold, italicized, regular, and you will have the case listed for now for all of these. If you want to add tracking um, or line spacing, which is letting, you can. So those are all things to think about as well as color. So those are all different styles that you will know at the end of this design. So. I don't want to confuse anyone, but I think that maybe it's better to, I know I had this due at the end of class with these decisions made ahead of time, but maybe we fill this in in the midst of designing and you know all these final things at the end. And I will go ahead and put this as instructions so you know a little bit better in the assignment. So these are things that you will choose for all of this. When it's the color, we need it to be the hex code. Does everyone know those codes from their stylescape? Yes or no? If you don't, 
you can open up your stylescape, whether it's in Photoshop or Illustrator, and find, I'm just gonna open up this file, because it's here, and find those colors. So if I eye drop the color, if you had a swatch of the color, if I, ooh, not that one. Let's select this. So this, if this blue was one of your colors, if I double click on the swatch over in my toolbar, I'm gonna be using this color down here, this hashtag hex color. I just would copy it and I'm gonna add my list of colors here. Included in your list of colors is if you're using white, I want white. If you're using black, I want black. So good practice for some web design um, is actually to have your text in the darkest gray, like a charcoal gray version, instead of black. They find that it's a little bit easier on the eye. So I'm gonna, go here. I'm going to put this down. Let's see what 90, 80% gives me. 90% gives me. I'm curious. So if I put in one, two, three, four, five, six nines, whoo, wrong way. Let's do threes. One, two, That gives me 58%. Oh, it changes all of my CMYK, that's why. So if I do, it's 51, 51, 51 on RGB, if you just look. But 33333 three, 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 three is a nice color to put your paragraph text in and your headlines. Black is okay too, but this is for some reason just doesn't have as much contrast on screen. So you may not have any block on your page at all. You might just have 33333. Three, 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 three. So black, these are stuff that you will memorize at some point. 0000, zero, 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 zero is black. Does anyone know what white is? F, 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 F. Oh, I put in <laughs> way too many. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Is it going to work for me? Oh, what's happening? Is it five of them? That's why. <laughs> no, it's it's usually six. Yeah. Oh, maybe capitalized because I had lowercase. Lowercase? It must be. It must read it differently. I don't know who invented this number letter system. But you can go through and put all your colors that you have on your stylescape on here. Some other decisions that you have to hand over to developers, and we'll add this last one. There's a couple more, but I want to add one more, is button style. And I'm going to copy and paste this and put it into the assignment so you can see these things I'm asking for. So button style, let's look on a real web page. Let's see. So button style is you'll have a text color and a button color. That's just the color that it is. And then you'll have something called hover. So when you hover over it, it changes. Your text style might change. Your text color might change. Your button background color might change. So those are the, the last things that I want to have. Because usually your buttons are all of the same on your site. 
because your buttons are your calls to action. Your buttons are saying, click me, I do something, read more, buy this. You want them to be designed similarly so that the user knows this is where they're getting more information or acting upon. So you will have just your regular style and your hover. So you can even go from, this is title case. You can hover over and have it go to all caps. You could have it go to bold. You could have it stay the same or an outline on the box. It's up to you, but it is called hover. So we will, button style will be color, text, and then hover color not Hoover, hover color, and hover text. And this will be your hex code. This will be a hex code, and then your text will be the same information as not that. Hang on. So you'll have probably at least five colors, if not more, depending on how many neutrals you put in. So this is kind of your template here. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to leave the student. I'm going to submit that assignment in case so I don't lose it on my end. Leave student view. So this said it was initially due, this will be initially due um, after you finish making up your web page because you're going to be making design styles along the way and that's a little bit better way to do it I think now that we kind of talked about what they were. So we'll put this at Monday at midnight. So to find this information, let's now go into XD and figure out how we turn this into working for you. If you have things in Illustrator, you can simply copy and paste over your logos. Open it in Illustrator, copy it, paste it in. Now is the time, whoa, what did I... that you are going to draw specific icons that match your logo. So now you're going to have the time to make some of these icons that go with your brand. So these icons you will have to design because I want you to stay to this exact same template. A couple things that the smoothie people might need to change is maybe this doesn't say reservations. Maybe you turn this into join our rewards program. So the idea is I still want to have a form here. I still want images where there's images. You can find some logos that represent things that would match your brand at this point. What words need to be real and what words don't need to be real. So I don't expect you to write all the copy for this. So you can approach this. It's going to be called a high fidelity mock-up is what it's called in the UX land, which is, you know, use uh, user interface. If you're getting a job in UX or use UI, this would be called a high fidelity mock-up. We're going to view this as if you were selling it as a template. So we used that hamburger template. It looked like an almost ready to go hamburger shop. You could tell what the titles were. You could tell what the, the sub headlines were. It had a lot of text to match the brand and match the genre of restaurant that it was. So I expect when you change this template over that it's matching your brand and your genre. You can use Lorem Ipsen for these paragraphs. I am okay with that, but
but I would, you can make up information for hours and you can make up information for addresses and all of those things. All these images need to look and match your brand. The titles of what you're selling should match what you have, what's on your menu. But these things, I mean, some people have a lot of fun with this. They love to make up the menu and the names of their items or their sandwiches or their burgers or their smoothies. But this can be Lorem Ipsen as well. Just these major categories should have real titles. So you would go into designing the desktop first and where you have these you can go, you're going to have to find all these different images that you're going to need to use, so it's going to take some time to hunt it down. Let's see if I have any photos here. I have some random kombucha photos from another site. You can take a photo off your desktop or a folder, and you just drop it right in this box. And it shows up. The only thing that you can still see in there is that little, um, where does it go? You can still see your the little mountains. Nope. So you can go into this, double click, and delete those mountains out. What's nice is you already had that there. The picture of you've used InDesign. The, the picture kind of went into that frame just like an InDesign. Now it's just kind of stuck in that box. So in InDesign, you had those options to kind of double click into it and move it around. Um, this one, seems to fill the whole space. There we go. So you can, so I can double click into this and you'll see the two. So here is my box and here's the photo itself. I can enlarge this photo and double click out of it and then I see the enlarged photo. So it's putting it into that frame. So you just, to get those images in, you are just taking images and simply dragging it in. You do have to double click to remove your mountains. And you can double click again within that and then double click again and you can change the size of some of these things and move it around. So this should show how having wireframes can be really fast. And here if there's button styles made in the components you would change this says dark button. It's labeled really well, so I know if it's a certain type of button. You can edit, edit the master component. And then if you had, if you knew your colors, you would just copy and paste this that code here, because you'd already have that color ready to go for you, for the fill. I don't know why it's not showing up there. It's very interesting and you could go in and highlight the text maybe let's see why are you it's interesting that it showed up there do you guys kind of get what I'm getting at I am not sure why this particular, oh, because I turned the fill off. Well, there you have it. There's the color. Don't turn the fill off. That's a terrible idea. There's the text color. You will not see the hover. You won't be able to see the hover. But you, what you will be able to see is what you wrote down, or what I will be able to see, or developer will be able to see, is what you write down on that style guide. 
So that is another reason why you give that information to the developers. You may have a very specific thing that you want to happen to this button. But you can't necessarily show it on this flat design. Does that make sense? We will get into prototyping. I have that, that's a little bit big of a jump. We'll do that next week. So you'll notice what was put in the design. And I did say all designs should have, all buttons should have the same color. You can have multiple buttons. Obviously this template I was looking ahead of time has two buttons right next to each other. And sometimes two exact buttons right next to each other might not be the best design of, this, of the exact same color. But you'll see all the ones here that change to that red background. Even on the mobile, so much work is done quickly. This is where um, now maybe if you have a real address, I am okay with taking a screenshot of a Google map and putting that in for your map design here. And then now it's just going to be taking time to find the images that work, changing some of those headlines, making it your colors, making it match your typefaces. Are there questions? Should we change the exact button? Yeah, you're gonna the, the, the second one. You're gonna change all all your no, no. if we have two buttons. Yeah, you can make it so there's probably a, a light button on here somewhere, or you can have another button styled. So you can style it as a component, or you could select hold shift and select each button okay. and change it by hand. There's no right or wrong way. My is it great if you have all these symbols and all these things to the left? Yes. If you start practicing that from the beginning, your design flow and the speed of your design is going to be fast. There's one thing about being able to design good, and there's something else that, that makes you really hireable if you can also design fast. So can you design fast and can you design good? Those are the two things we want to practice. If you can already design good, this is going to help with your speed. And so it'll change those things quickly. The end result that I want to happen for you is no one's going to know, no one's going to open up this file and see that you have all of these things. And when you're first designing, you do. it took me, I think, 15 years to realize I could use a clipping mask in Illustrator. So I would take little rectangles and hide all the things because I was too lazy to go to Photoshop and crop what I needed because I was afraid I was going to lose the, lose the picture. So, and, and design, when I gave it off to someone, they didn't know that I was hiding things. It still looked good. So your number one goal is to get these to look like it matches your brand, like a real website. You're going to fill in you're going, to do the, the, you're going to do the desktop and you're going to do the mobile. It should be fairly quick because you're just changing some text, you're changing the style, and you're dropping in some images. Finding the images might take a while. I am not expecting this to be the most perfectly designed, best, you found all the best images in the whole entire world. I just want you to make sure you can get it done because it's about learning the process and dealing with XD a little bit more. If you want to use something that works great for, you had Unsplash, I am also okay with using Adobe Stock. You can download photos, it'll have the watermark on it. And that's okay for this type of project. And the reason by using Adobe Stock works out well is someone had um, a smoothie shot. So I'm gonna type in smoothies. Over here in your filters, what ends up being really great is they have a category over here called color. And I can put in I want the green here. I can copy this color. I can put this color in and it's going to find me images that have that color. 
it's a quick way to help create the images that are on this template to match your brand. Now, do you need to have every single green smoothie that's on there because you just found a green smoothie? No, but it's a quick way to make, to find some of those things happen. Let's say you had testimonials and you needed people of pictures, like happy people. And you were doing something about testimonials or people that shopped there. You're still getting something that has that green. Let's do something that wouldn't be as obvious as grass or green for a smoothie. Let's try some purple. If you did blue, you're going to get blue sky. What's still nice, though, is you get blue sky that matches your blue color. So I want to find some pictures of people that have this purple in it. It just helps. Download a preview. You do have to sign in. It just downloads it to your desktop. You can add it to a library. If you add it to your library and you name the library and you're in XD, you go to your libraries here. Does it not show up here? Do it, do it, it does. So on your account that you're in, you could call this float or 22 and add all those images into a library. That's not XD, sorry. Ha ha, that is Illustrator. Let's see. So you have Creative Cloud Libraries. You could open, find your library here and you should have access to those images to then just drop them in. I always, when I'm working on a website, tend to download the photo though. That's why I wasn't super familiar with this. The reason I'm downloading the photo is because I know that I need to upload it multiple places later. If you are designing with a group too, those are all the other assets you have to have. So you have to send off your icons, send off your photos, send off your type styles and your buttons and all of that. We're not getting all of there, but I would maybe just make that folder. And did it have any people have a folder with all those images you download while making your stylescape? So you, hopefully you have a good amount of images to start with, because um, that's probably what's going to take the longest to get this completed. So it, I ask that you turn in a PDF just like we did for the wireframes and also your XD file. So you're going to, when you're done with this, you're going to have two files that you attach. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. So if you have, because all the artboards can stay like this, and then when you export it, it's nice for me because I can actually see the PDF change, and so it helps me to see scale really quickly when I'm grading it. And then I'm having the XD file because I just want to see how you explored using your components, your character styles, and adding your colors. Yeah? Um, you know how you drag and drop the image? Uh-huh. Can you do that with a PNG file? And then, and for a Photoshop file? Yeah. You can do a file open in XD for a Photoshop file and then maybe copy and paste it over. So there, you could design this whole thing in Photoshop and open it in XD and prototype it. Is the Photoshop file a JPEG or because you cropped it? Yeah, yeah, like, like a PNG. I would just export it as a JPEG and save it and then drop that JPEG in because that's how you would deliver it to a someone else that's designing anyways. Or when we go to without code to design, you can only upload a PNG, a JPEG, or a SVG. So you can't actually upload the Photoshop file. Yeah, so Photoshop is a great tool to alter all of it, your images that you need. So by next Monday at midnight, this style guide will be completed. So you probably will be working on that back and forth while you're doing your, your um, what is it called? Your mock-up. Um, or you might just wait till the end to put that in there. And you will be, this next little area I'll put this video up in. 
and then you are going to do the XD website mock-up. I talked about prototyping. We'll do that next week. What that is is basically making your web your your XD web page look real, so you can make it look like it has links, and you can make it look like it hovers, like a really like a real web page. So I'm going to delete this portion. There's no prototyping that you need. So this just repeats everything I talked about, making it look like your brand, putting in the images, putting the most words as possible, making it look like a finished website. So when I, I, I mentioned how this could be like a template that's for sale, so these are the same type of ideas of a template that's for sale. This looks like a finished website. This portion here has Lorem Ibsen. The photos all match, the colors all match, the buttons match. This still says learn more, it doesn't say headline or subhead. So anything that's kind of those big words, you're gonna have be going towards what your brand in your restaurant is. Here, it says about me, but it doesn't really tell you the small details. So those small details can stay Lorem Ibsen. This still feels like a complete designed web page. Does everyone kind of understand the expectation of what needs to happen on here? Okay, awesome.